Hi guys, so this weekend we are repointing a stone wall and I'm going to talk you through it. So if you've got a stone wall that you want to maintain, look after or repoint, you're going to know the best way of doing it. So first things first, no two stones were created equal. So the first thing you want to be aware of is that your mortar should not be stronger than your stones. Uh, different walls, different properties are gonna be built from different stones. And here in the UK, we can drive around and we can actually, it's, it's like getting a peek into the Earth's crust. We can see what is below the subsoil, what sort of stone we are on just by looking at the properties because particularly in older properties, the stone that they were built with is gonna be local stone that, was, that has come out of the ground. So this stone here that this property was built from would almost certainly have come out of the ground very, very locally to where it is. You know, this is what's going to be below my feet, almost certainly. And if not here, then very near here. But whatever type of stone you have, you're going to want to know what sort of mortar to use with it. Because one of the problems that people tend to find, and the problem with this wall here that we're looking to make a... Oh, not the best repair we can actually, because we are, my hands are tied by what they, it, it's for a local council and they know exactly what they want me to do and it's not really what's ideal for the wall, but this has been repointed with a really hard mortar and we'll talk about that a bit in a minute. And basically the mortar is stronger than the stones. So over time with expansion and contraction with the elements, rather than the mortar being able to move and the stones moving it and doing what they want to do, it's the other way around and the mortar is forcing the stones to move and actually crushing them and cracking them and making them fail. And that's why in so many areas, you know, the, the stones are just falling apart and falling out of the wall because the mortar that it's been repointed with was too strong. And nine times out of 10, the reason that happens is because someone doesn't know any better and they just use a sand and cement mortar, something like a five and one mix. And it's just not what that stone can cope with. Traditionally, it would have been built with a lime mortar. So that's what we're using. Now, unfortunately, what this will really need is to be taken down and rebuilt because there's, too much of the sand and cement mortar which is still here and it can't really be repointed for two reasons firstly because that's not what they want to pay for they don't want to pay for the whole thing to be redone but secondly because the the stones that are within it are too far gone in a lot of places they've just been cracked and they've gone so it's just not possible so because that mortar is too strong, it's basically, it's caused so much of the wall to fail. There is no kind of salvaging it at this point. It needs to be rebuilt, but that's not what we have a remit to do. We have a remit to, with the best will in the world, all we're, all we're allowed to do is just take out the worst mortar, the loose mortar and repoint it. Now we are using a lime mix. Now, even with lime mixes, you can still use too strong a mix. And it's going to come down to, again, your area, what your stone is made of. But there's a stone that we've used in the past called Marnel Stone, which is from a quarry in Marnel in Dorset. And it is the brittlest stone I've ever used. It's very similar to chalk, in fact. And you need to use a really, really light mix with that. A little bit further south, we get as far as Portland, and we're into Portland Stone, a really hard limestone, which you can use a 5 one cement mix with no trouble at all so it does depend on the type of stone and you know you can tell just by looking at stone roughly whereabouts on the spectrum it's going to fall you can hit it with a hammer you know how easily does it break because that's what we're really talking about is how it works under compression when it's being forced inwards and moving around is it going to crumble or is it not and at, you know how easily is it going to crumble so you want to make sure you use a nice light mix that's the first thing now like i said we're not using cement we're using a lime now there's several types of lime but the easiest ones to deal with for a novice or a diyer are the stuff that comes in bags like this rather than a lime putty if you use a hydraulic or hydrated lime if you want to use cement for whatever reason then you're going to want to use a hydrated lime and you're going to mix that with your sand and cement but if you don't want to use cement as we're not then you're going to use hydraulic lime how you want to think about it is hydraulic lime will actually set with the sand that's all it needs it'll do the job that we might think of when we think of cement whereas hydrated lime won't but what hydrated lime will do it'll give the cement a little bit more flexibility so rather than using we, we might consider say 
for every shovel of cement, we might use five shovels of sand, and for every shovel of hydraulic lime, we might use three or four shovels of sand. And then for every shovel of hydrated lime, we might use, again, three to four shovels of sand. So you might use one hydrated lime, one cement, and eight sand. That would be an acceptable mix. Or you might use just four sand and one hydraulic lime, as we're using here. Now, that's gonna give that mortar lots of flexibility. Unfortunately, it's too little too late for this wall because so much of it is still gonna have this sand and cement mortar in it. I'm not railing against sand and cement. I use it all the time. And if you've got the right type of stone, then you can absolutely use it. But as you can see, you know, this is a sandstone. You can see just by looking at it, the color of it, it is sandy. And this looks more like a traditional lime mortar. But if you look closely, this is the original lime mortar and they would have mixed things like little bits of ash in it. Those, those little black bits. So that's a traditional mix, which is lovely to see. So that's the first thing to say, you know, make sure you get your mix right. Don't mix anything too hard for the wall that you're trying to repair, because if you do, you're not gonna get a long-term repair. Next thing is actually putting the mortar in. So once you've mixed it, and you mix it exactly as you think you mix it, you won't need Feb mix or any kind of admixture because you're using lime and that will do the same job. So once you've mixed it, you then want two trowels. You want a big trowel and a little trowel, or as I would call them, a brick laying trowel and a gauging trowel. And here's my mix. You wanna get some of that on your trowel. And then you're gonna use your gauging trowel to put it in. Now, it takes a little bit of practice to do a lot of the techniques that I would use. So, in an ideal world, you get your mortar on your trowel like this. So it's fairly flat. And then what you can do, you see, is scrape it off so you've just got a line of it down your the edge of your gauging trowel which then allows you to be a bit precise about where you're putting it now remember at this stage we're not worried about smearing the stones and i'll explain why shortly when we come to actually face it up it's going to look quite hideous the first stage of this process makes it look quite bad and that's okay don't worry about that we'll explain all that in a minute and we'll take it to a finish and then you'll see what i mean and don't worry about how long it takes either you know, obviously this is something I've got quite a lot of practice and experience with. But it will make a mess. So I've got something down on the floor here to catch the drips. Obviously it depends what sort of ground you have as to how much you need to worry about it. But the one thing that is really important is when we're putting this into our joints, we're actually trying to compress it. So we're actually trying to put in a tiny bit more than it will hold. And I'm squeezing it and compressing it into that joint as I move my trowel away. That's really important because that's what's gonna allow it to stay in there rather than just fall out even when it's set. When it comes to how wet you want your mix, I strongly recommend that you just have a play around. Remember, you can always add more water but you can't take it away. But it's gonna depend on the type, of, the type of stonework that you're working with and also the weather conditions. Now this actual wall has been very unloved and it's in a pretty hideous state really. And it doesn't really give me the opportunity to show you some of the things that I'd like to show you, you know, and show you a bit that looks amazing when it's finished because I can only make it as look as good as the wall will let me. But here we've got two stones that aren't too bad they're you know pretty much in line and I just want to show you you know how we're forcing it right into that joint overfilling it if you like and what's really important is that we actually cover right across the joint and slightly over the shoulder of the stone so this here is the shoulder of the stone also called an aris and we want to just cover that because what we'll do later when it's a bit drier is we'll take that back and that's when it starts to look pretty. So once you've filled in all of your pointing, the next thing you need is some patience. Luckily, because mine is in short supply, we've got a really long wall here. Started at the top there, came down through here this morning, and then we went onto the back. So the stuff we did this morning 
is where I want it to be and I'll just show you now. So uh, I've started the second stage on this and I'll talk you through that. But what you're looking for it to be is basically so that you can press it with your finger and if you press it hard, you'll just leave an indent. But you've got to press it pretty hard. If you just press it lightly, you won't really see much. So that's how you want it. And then the next thing you want is a stick. Round it off at the end, you can use anything. I like to use an old broom handle or something like that made with a nice piece of hardwood. So it's gonna last me a long time, but in a pinch, I'll grab any old piece of wood that's about, you know, the dimensions of a roofing batten. And you wanna smooth the ends off. The easiest way of doing that is actually by dragging them along something like some concrete, a concrete block you can do it on in no time at all, uh, or a road. So once you've smooth, and that's how you'll be able to get it fairly quickly. Once you've done that, you're just gonna come along. This is the next stage, it's a, it's a several step process to get to a finish, but you're just gonna come along and just take off that top layer and start to reveal where the, sh where the stones are. And the only bits of equipment that we're going to be using from this point onwards are this stick, a wire brush, and a soft brush. And it's going to be highly dependent on what stage you catch your mortar at as to, you know, which ones you're going to use when. So over here, we run our stick over this, over this piece here, and then just soft brushed it. And that's almost as good as it's going to get, but you'll notice here, We've got all that smearing over the face of the brick that I told you not to worry about. And that's because that will come off fairly easily with this wire brush. And if you try and do this when it's too wet, it's just gonna clog up the brush and smear more. So it's really important that you wait long enough. And usually on a nice day, on a summer's day, you'd point the morning's work in the afternoon and the afternoon's work you'd point the following day. So we'll be back tomorrow to finish off. So you remember me saying earlier, it's really important to cover the shoulders of the stone. Well, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna uncover them. And again, as you go, dependent on how wet the mortar is, you see here I'm raking the mortar and leaving grooves in it with my wire brush. We're not too worried about that at this point because we go from there to a soft brush again. And then finally, we can take all these lines out with our stick again. And the last step is always the soft brush. And you can be as fussy as you like and go on for as long as you like, but that there, is basically how you get that pointed finish. There's several different types of finish on stonework. This is probably the most common, and I mean, it's not gonna look amazing, unfortunately, because of all the issues that I spoke about before. You know, the actual stonework here is awful. It's crumbling, it's been replaced. You can see, it's just not, if I laid this, if I built this wall, I'd be horrified, I'd be embarrassed at saying, you know, this is what I built. But you can see back here, this is the same style of pointing. And if you look closely, you can see the grooves of the wire brush. So at the time that they got it that far, and there's nothing wrong with this, this is perfectly reasonable pointing, perfectly acceptable. But at the time they got it this far, if they'd gone over it again with the stick, they could have taken out those grooves. Equally, one thing they haven't done, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm quite fussy with my work, is they haven't really exposed the shoulders of the stone here with a wire brush. I think, you know, if you do those things, it's gonna look that much nicer. But there's nothing wrong with that pointing, and from a distance, it looks great. And it's gonna be very difficult for mine to look that nice because of what it is I'm pointing. But anyway, there you go. That is how to take care of a natural stone wall, how to repoint it. And I hope you found that uh, useful. Thanks for watching, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again soon.